again only a vlog about the say downgrading of the uh, beautiful Varnal oscillator sine wave oscillator going to maximum one mega cycles that got broke during my oscilloscope experiments anyway so downgrading means that I want to make a coil oscillator and this beautiful tuning capacitors here uh, that's of course very good usable and here I made that um, transistor oscillator made with a field effect transistor I have quite a few field effect transistors but the, the problem is that uh, in general often only the PF245 works I don't know why so perhaps the BF245 is a very peculiar um, field effect transistor with extremely good qualities on um, high frequencies. Uh, I'm more or less sure that it is true. So in my book Retro Radio issued by Elector in the Netherlands I published this oscillator also made with a BF245 and we have the 245A and B and C the BF245A is very sensitive at its gate in fact a little bit too sensitive and then especially for static charges the BF245B is less sensitive and the BF 245C is more, more less sensitive anyway. Here are the pin connections. This coil can be made with say 300 windings on a form of approximately 3 millimeters in diameter. So, uh, Anyway, that was all. But I made this circuit from my book. And at first I had many problems. I could not get the field effect transistor into oscillation. And well, the most simple uh, way to do more study is to bring the voltage to the oscillator down. Now we are on 6.7 volts. Let's see what happens on, uh, sorry for all the movements, 12 volt. I now go to 12 volt. Of course the amplitude goes up. That's completely logical. And you often see, say, more uh, deterioration in the waveform. I cannot show where the frequency is and I mean the exact frequency. I only show the waveform when I connect my counter here. The oscillation stops. Has everything to do of course with the, uh, the output of such an oscillator that is extremely sensitive. So when say the output capacitor is too high could be that it damps the oscillation and then I mean the amplitude and that's the reason why you see here 68 picofarad so that's a, in fact a tiny capacitor and then in terms of capacitance So these are more or less a critical factors and when you study the other circuit and I will give the link in the text box 
you can see here, you can see the other circuit made with the same field effect transistor, etc., etc. The test oscillator, uh, you can see that I've used here different capacitors, different values, anyway. Important for doing experiments. So, well, um, this is, say, the second stage of the project. And, well, I hope it's possible to take conclusions. I've tested a few BF256A field effect transistors and they all worked. And that's a kind of a good thing because the BF245A or B or C is obsolete. It was, say, the best uh, field effect transistor oscillator to make short wave oscillators or other oscillators going from, say, 500 kilo cycles up to 18 mega cycles. But perhaps this uh, field effect transistor is a good replacement. And it is the, perhaps it's possible to read, it is the BF256A transistor. Field effect transistor. Um, well, I'm going to do more tests, more experiments, etc., etc. Perhaps I will make a new video. Uh, the good thing of this all is that this transistor, field effect transistor, also works compared to the BF245. I don't, don't think that this is the best choice, so when you can find a BF245 somewhere, and then especially from the good manufacturers, say Philips, uh, could be that you can find it and make such a oscillator circuit. Waveform is showed now. The coil that is connected is this coil, so it has a quite fierce core, but that in fact tells not so much about the frequency. Of course the, um, the, the ferrite materials, the ring uh, coils, have a color code. So this is a green uh, ferrite ring, that means that it um, works in a specific frequency band at its best. I don't uh, do these studies, but well, when you are, say, a professional uh, or want to know exactly uh, the frequency band for which such a um, ferrite ring is usable, Study it, always, of course. There are different colors. Perhaps I can give some examples of different colors of these ferrite rings. They are often used, by the way, in um, computer power supplies. That's perhaps interesting to tell. I have to say search, etc., etc. At the moment, I cannot find, say, a good example, but perhaps this is an example. This is a ferrite ring. Um, it's dark. It's it is uh, say the typical uh, color of ferrite. But when it has a certain color, say yellow or green. Uh, that are the colors that I've found. It is specific made for a certain frequency. Oh, well, here is, for instance, 
a small ferrite core made and the color of the ferrite material is green. So this was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to struggle further in this project. At least we, we have now a good waveform. And say uh, there's of course more to do. I want to use all these switches here to switch in different coils, five different coils, which, which I want to get uh, to frequencies between approximately 1 megahertz and 12 megahertz. So, a lot more to do. Thanks for watching.